here. I am here. Good to see you. Good to see you. I appreciate it, the girly weirdo. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Banfart, hey, how you doing? You guys are here. We've got the regulars. Um, okay, so today I have, um, um, I was debating pretty much all week. What's up, Wildstorm? How you doing? So I was debating all week on, on, on what to actually show you guys today. Um, so there's stuff I can go through uh, to actually demonstrate. Um, um, but I think another part of sh demonstration or showing is to kind of, you know, take something that, that, that I did in a, in a past uh, that it exists that I really like. I think I hit it on, on the mark and show you guys, I'm going to give you guys the breakdowns of that. So, um, so today it's pretty much show and tell, uh, but, uh, but I think you'll have fun because I'm going to go through a couple pretty, pretty hot pieces today. Um, and I will do a demonstration on hair. So today is a, a hair day. So I'm going to set my timer, you know, for like maybe, I don't know, however long it, it takes. I, I don't really want to set, set a timer on it, but, um, um, so I'll just, I'll just kind of jump right into it and I hope you guys like what you see today because I'm going to try to get this thing going. Okay. So here we go. Okay. So I'm going to jump on and show you guys some... Some pretty hot stuff right here. Where is this? Oh, here it is. It's like I'm jumping over the place. So uh, here we go. So I'm going to do a quick demonstration on hair. How do you draw hair? So um, I'm going to switch my pencil tool. Test it out. Do some quick tests. I love this this uh, this pro program. I don't know if you guys know. But this is probably my favorite program. Um, I use it. This is I use Clip Studio about eighty percent of the time, and Photoshop when I need to. <laughs> Pretty much, that's that's how how it works with me. Um, okay, so here. Okay, so let's go through. I'm gonna quickly do just like a base head. Okay, um, I'm not gonna go too detail on this. I'll kind of scribble something. Okay, so I'm going to just knock this out in the background so we have something to look at. E, his eyes is kind of wonky. Move this over a little bit. Okay, so here. The basis, the, the, the core of it for me, there, there's a lot of different ways I've seen people draw hair um, realistically. Then I've seen them draw hair, you know, with a, a stylized type of approach. Um, I've seen it drawn in like a more uh, a tune style. Um, typically in, in comics, I'll, I'll try, I'll just... Uh, I'll give you guys both comics and um, actually, you know, I'm, I'll just stick with, with with comics for today. So I don't want to, you know, give you guys too much. So for today, I'm just going to show you how I would draw hair, and you know, when it comes down to comics. So, hey, what's up, uh, M. Tellus? How you doing? How you doing? I gotta say hi to everyone. Wild Storm, already said hi to you. Uh, Shannonator, Shannonator. How you doing, Shana Nader and Girly Weirdo? All right. Okay, so here we go. So let's say um, like one of the guys I really like to draw is, is, is Grifter. You guys know, um, you know, I was uh, the original artist on the Grifter series back in the day. We're talking like, you know, 200 years ago. Um, so 
for grifter. I, actually, me, I'm, I'm going to back back up a little bit because I'm kind of freestyling this, so I'm going to I'm going to jump around. I'm, nothing scripted here, so this is all just go as go as you go. So what I like to tell people to do is, if you can draw an S. And that's the, this is the core of how I break down my hair. It's just a bunch of S's. Sometimes the S goes this way. Sometimes it goes this way. Sometimes I'll draw it long. Sometimes I'll draw it short or I'll squiggle. Actually, I, I, I won't ever do this. I'll, you'll probably see me do this and then this and then this. But I'll try to break it up a little bit, kind of um, break it up a little bit. But this is that's the basis of it, okay? So... What I like to do is try to get a sense of what kind of character this is. If he has long hair, you know, the hair's going to be long. I know the hair's going to fit something like this, so I, I kind of get a sense of it. Or if the hair is going to, it's going to be kind of short, uh, if he's going to have like a high top type of feel, well, is the hair going to have, you know, something shorter, maybe something like this. So this, when I scribble it this fast, this is just so I can get a sense of it before I actually go down and actually start doing something. Um, so let's say I was drawing someone with short hair, okay? So if someone with short hair, I would probably just scribble it. Well, not probably. I know I would do it. This is how I do it. I would just go ahead and scribble the entire shape out like this. Then once I have the basic shape, what I'm looking for, then I would go through and... What did I, do? I could have just dropped it. I'm going to go through and just kind of draw some short S's. Now, the reason it's done in this style, um, it's because this is what it's just trying to transition to after years and years of doing comics, you know, drawing all kinds of hairstyles um, on all kinds of characters. This is pretty much what it just says tra transition to. Now, um, if, if his hair was a little bit longer, you know, obviously I would pull it like this. I'm literally like kind of just drawing like fire. Think about it kind of almost like I'm drawing a lot of fire, pieces of fire. So this is a fire kind of breaking off. I mean, you have little you know, little flames here and there. That's pretty much all I'm doing with the hair. So I'm trying to keep it everything. Everything is just an S. Now, if this character had um, long hair, I would probably draw the hair. Why don't I keep? Why I keep saying probably? No, I would do it. So this is the format how I would break up the hair. I'm not too concerned about um, detail, meaning how how clean the thing is, because you can always go back and clean it up. Right now, um, it's still somewhat in a semi sketch phases. So sketch sketch phase. It's almost like um, you're, you're drawing from a from feeling rather than um, reality or 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 it's so like a, a, a template, you know, don't try not to think too much of structure. Uh, well, you want to think of structure, but not trying to get too rigid in your style, in your line, in your line work. Because if you stay rigid, your hair is going to look stiff and it won't look like it's flowing. It won't look like there's wind going through it. So just stick with drawing a bunch of S type feelings like this. If you do this, you can break down here. A lot easier and then once I have something like that okay if it's a blonde hair or blonde character um, I would leave it blonde I would just leave it open if it's a red hair you'd leave it open maybe I'd go in and do a little bit of shading but the moment it starts getting to a brown like brown hair or black hair or some kind of grayish color hair something like that obviously you're gonna want to going to do some some shading so in the past, I've shown you guys this technique where I've scribbled stuff like this before on the side and just kind of scribble something. And then you go through and you kind of 
break it down. You try to I you try to lock it down, lock down the shape, and just outline the dark areas. So that's one way of that's that's the actual way I'm I'm going to fill in the hair. So once I have that, the next thing I'm going to do is think of lighting now. So I'm going to go through and just kind of scribble some shapes in there. And then remember, I'm not concerned too much about um, how beautiful it's going to look, how perfect the hair is going to come out. So I'm thinking, I'm trying to think of flow. How is this just going to flow? And how is, this, how is gravity going to naturally pull on this group of hair that's falling on someone's shoulder? Now, once I have this basic look to it, remember a lot of it's going to be redrawn. Now I go back and start to solidify certain areas. Just isolate that, reinforce all those dark areas that you're doing. And you're painting happy, happy hair strands like, uh, like uh, you know, Mr. Bob Ross. Mr. Bob Ross. I still love watching Bob Ross. I still watch him. I was just watching him the other day. Actually, I was on uh, I was on YouTube and I was watching some old 1980s reruns of uh, Bob Ross painting happy trees. Bob Ross was the man. That's the guy I used to paint. Um, I used to learn how to paint when I was like in the seventh and eighth grade, uh, ninth grade, eighth grade, ninth grade. Um, I used to sit and watch him on TV. I think he was on PBS or something. Okay. So now you kind of, you can see how I, I just pulled that out of that. I get, I get, you get a nice little flow out of it. Um, and you know, and the moment it goes into um, inks, it starts to look as you can see. I'm just multiplying it right now. You start to get like a sense of what it's going to look like, you know. So this is a quick demonstration of how I would draw hair. So um, you know, just remember when you're drawing your hair and your characters. I'm going to start over again on this one. Let's say this guy had. Um, Let's say he had, um, remember, thinking shape. Let's say, um, okay, this guy is thinking shapes at first. Okay, he has a crazy looking style here. His beard here, and he's bald all here on the side. Or maybe he has a, you know, a fade or something is going off. So, so now I'm like, okay, this character is doing this. Okay. Um, So now, go through, just draw a bunch of S's. Don't worry about if your lines cross or across you know, another line like that. Don't worry about that. You can clean all that up later. Right now, you're just concerned about just getting the, the flow. Make sure everything's flowing right um, with the character with the hair. And it looks good. It looks like something that, OK, I can work with this. Now you have something to work with now. So you go through and start adding detail. You go in, add more strands. Like this, you can break, break that up a little bit more. And this is if he's, if I'm going blonde or something, this, even though it's kind of, it's coming out, you know, kind of rough or, a little bit messy in this area. Don't wor worry about it. That's what erasers are for. So you can easily get your eraser. Um, make sure it's not too, too intense. And just kind of lightly erase it. Go back. Oops. And now reinforce it.
And if this was dark here, we would go through. You want to keep in mind of highlights too. Where is where's the hair? Where's the peak of the bend? And where am I going to create the highlights? So right now I'm just keeping in mind. Okay, I want some kind of highlights on those guys here. So now I kind of get a sense of it. Like, okay, I get a sense of this. Get your pencil. Reinforce those shapes. Add a couple strands here and there. Now, if this guy had, let's say he had a beard. Okay. What I like to do whenever I have something round is a round object, which is going to be a chin. Um, what I remember telling you guys in the past is if you have a hot spot and you're trying to render something that's going to it's going to be black down here or darker in this area you want to render towards the light so you want to render towards the light so so i'm thinking his chin is a round spot there's a hot there's a hot spot here which actually is if you do the breakdowns of it let's let's do the breakdowns of that so if his if his mouth was here and his bottom lip was here means he's going to have this type of shape to him, okay? It means if you break break down as a grid, it already has this round shape to it already, okay? So now I'm not going to fight it. I'm going to go with it. So that means if, if it's round, if there's a round shape already, there's a hot spot and then there's a dark area. So I'm keeping in mind there's a hot spot here. So I'm going to render towards the light. That's the first group of lines I'm going to do is render towards the light. And I would do the same thing if it was a blonde, if it was blonde beard, if it was if he had you know a dark you know black beard or brownish or I mean, he had like a reddish kind of beard and all I'm gonna do is just layer it so I'm pretty much doing like one group of lines like this and then in the second group of lines I'm just gonna just slightly change the direction and then you can do with this you can constantly you can go back and forth a little bit like this too just kind of scribble some lines back and forth to kind of mess with it a little bit that's one way of do doing it. another way of doing it is if you just throw like a bunch of short lines like this and you just can't just go ahead and layer it like this reinforce it back and forth and, and as you're getting closer to this light start to space it out start to space it out a little bit like this and the further away from the light you go the more intense you want to get And keep, and keep going over it until it looks right. It looks right. Okay, this is something. I kind of get a sense of this. And now you have this hot spot here. And then it gets a little bit darker. gets a little bit darker. And now it's the darkest in this region all back, back here. So that's how you want to think of it as you're rendering a beard. The top part of his lip depends on how how intense it is. If it was a light, you know, five o'clock shadow type of thing going on, you just kind of just just give him some stubbles like this. If it's a little bit more intense, then just go ahead and just get intense with it. But I'm thinking the um, I'm thinking there's a bright area here 
and it's everything's round, which is true because the face is going to have this round type of feel like this. So it's going to be hot over here because this is the closest, actually the closest to to your eye, to the camera, whatever. So that area I'm going to keep 